good morning students today we are going to discuss about the module number 5 that is synchronous motor drives so in this section i am going to discuss the various type of synchronous motors and then the equivalent circuit and phase diagram of cylindrical synchronous motor then the speed or characteristics of synchronous motor then the phase diagram of cylindrical pole synchronous motor expression for power and torque for a cylindrical pole synchronous motor and i will discuss the operation from fixed frequency supply and the variable frequency control of multiple synchronous motors so i will start with the different type of synchronous motors so now i will share some of the documents and now we'll see yes so this is uh, just the introduction of the synchronous motor so the speed of synchronous motor can be controlled by varying frequency of its source due to non availability of economical variable frequency sources this method of speed control was not used in the past so synchronous motors were mainly used in constant speed applications the development of semiconductor variable frequency sources such as inverters and cycloconverters has allowed their use in variable speed applications such as high power and high speed compressors blowers induced and forced draft fans mainline traction servo drivers and so on so Uh, mainly there are the different type of synchronous motors so one is the wound field synchronous motor the one is the wound field synchronous motor and the second is permanent magnet synchronous motor. permanent magnet synchronous motor also there are some other types like synchronous reluctance and hysteresis motors so here uh, whatever the wound field synchronous motor is there so it is again having two types one is the cylindrical rotor machine and the cylind pole rotor machine cylindrical rotor machine and the cylind pole rotor machine so whatever the cylindrical rotor motors are there so they have higher mechanical strength and they are employed for high speed applications for high speed applications and whereas the cylind pole rotor machines so they are again employed for low speed applications low speed applications and these wound field synchronous motors they are having area uniform so in this case whatever the area is there it is uniform in the particular rotor part and the stator whereas in the cylind pole machine the area is non uniform non uniform now uh, coming to the permanent magnet synchronous motor pmsm in permanent magnet synchronous motor uh, usually the ferrite magnets are employed ferrite magnets are employed so whatever the 
permanent magnets in bronze motors are there. So the motor, the rotor is permanent magnet. In, the, in this case, the rotor is a permanent magnet. Uh, and these are used for low and medium power applications. Low and medium power applications. And in this case, the field windings are absent. The PMM uh, SM, that is permanent magnet synchronous motor, the field windings are absent. So this permanent magnet synchronous motor, it is uh, classified into two types. One is the surface mount uh, PMSM, surface mount PMSM, uh, mainly um, it is consisting of two types. Uh, in this case, uh, again, uh, in the surface uh, mount PMSM, uh, whatever the motor is there, so it is again uh, kilowatt range. It is available in kilowatt range, and uh, uh, whatever the sorry, uh, and in the particular first type, what we have seen, that is bound field synchronous motor. It is uh, again available for megawatt range. It is huge size machines. Bound field synchronous motors are huge size machines, whereas the permanent magnet synchronous motors so they are uh, small size machines small size machines so again in the pmmc there are two types one is surface mount pmsm surface mount pmsm and the second is uh, is the interior pmsm interior pmsm so Again, surface mounted PM motors are of two types. One is projecting type in which magnets project from the surface of the rotor. And again, second is inset type in which the magnets are inserted into the rotor providing the smooth rotor surface, smooth rotor surface. So here we can see in the particular figures. So, These are the particular figures for projecting surface mounting uh, synchronous motor. And this is again for the uh, inset uh, particular synchronous motor inset type synchronous motor. And this is uh, again the inset, sorry, interior magnet, interior type of uh, PMSM, interior type of PMSM. So in the first case, projecting surface mounting, you can see uh, whatever the magnets uh, are there, they are projected, they are projected. And this is the rotor part of the motor and outside is the stator. And these are the particular uh, magnets. So now in the inset magnet, what happens? So whatever the magnet uh, inside the rotor is there, so it is aligned with the surfaces, aligned with the surfaces. Means uh, in this case, uh, there is no chance of fly off of this particular magnets because they are uh, readily fixed inside the particular rotor. So in the, that is second type, that is interior magnet. Uh, it is the second type. So in this case, uh, whatever the uh, rotor is there, here we have the rotor and the magnets are placed within the rotor. Magnets are placed in the rotor. So these are used for high speed applications. These are used for high speed applications. So again, these are very much popular uh, for the electric vehicle applications. And again, in this case, uh, whatever the magnets are there, they will not fly off. They will not fly off. So this is about the particular uh, types of the Synchronous motors. So now uh, we will see the particular cylindrical rotor mount field motor. So in this case, uh, you'll see the equivalent circuit and the phase diagram, phase diagram, and the speed or characteristics 
of this particular motor. So in this case, uh, here this is the particular equivalent circuit of the cylindrical rotor motor. So whatever the V is there, it is the applied voltage and whatever the E is there, it is induced voltage uh, in the particular motor and this is uh, excess, it is the excess synchronous reactance and IS, it is the current, uh, particular field current we can see. So in this case, uh, we are neglecting uh, particular stator losses, stator losses. So just by neglecting the stator losses, we can draw this particular uh, circuit. This is the applied voltage V and this is the E induced voltage in the particular motor and it is excess. So this is the simplified per phase equivalent circuit of a cylindrical rotor motor. Cylindrical rotor motor. In this case, uh, let us uh, derive an expression for a particular torque expression for the torque. So, in this case, uh, I will uh, write the power input to the motor as P in P. In. So, it is Vis cos pi, Vis cos pi. So, cos pi is the uh, again pi is the power factor angle. And here it is for the three phase, it is 3Vis cos pi. 3Vis cos pi. So, Again, uh, since the stator loss has been neglected, the power develops. So, whatever the P in uh, is there, it is equal to P out. P in is equal to P out because uh, we are neglecting the losses. And hence, whatever the power developed will be, it is Pm is equal to 3 B into Is cos pi. 3 B into Is cos pi. So now uh, we'll see the expression for the IS, expression for the IS. So in this case, uh, we need to put the IS cos pi, IS cos pi. So in order to have that particular uh, IS cos pi, first we need to uh, write the IS equation, IS equation. So in order to have that particular IS, so we need to draw this particular phase diagram. This is the phase diagram. So, in order to draw this particular phase diagram, again, just I will show you. Yes, this is the particular phase diagram. So, it is a reference axis. So, along the reference axis, first we have to draw the B phaser, B phaser, that is B is equal to B at an angle uh, zero. And then whatever the uh, excess is there. So again, uh, we, we are drawing the phaser of that drop, that is minus J I S excess. And then uh, whatever the I S is there, it is the I S phaser, I S phaser. So this I S, is uh, again lagging that V uh, by an angle theta, by angle theta. So now, uh, whatever the induced EMF is there, so it is the induced EMF, it is the induced EMF, means uh, if I take the phasor sum of V and this particular drop, then I'll get the E. And this delta is called as torque angle. It is the angle between the V and the E, V and the E. This is the torque angle. So from this, we can write the expression for IS as V minus E divided by J axis. V is the applied voltage. Uh, e is the induced voltage or the excitation divided by the particular uh, J axis. That is the uh, synchronous reactance. So now, just by taking the phasors, it is V at an angle zero. E at an angle minus delta, E at an angle minus delta, and divided by J axis. So now it is V divided by axis at an angle minus pi by 2, minus E divided by axis at an angle minus delta plus pi by 2. So now uh, it is having 
two components it is having two component two parts so one is i can write is cos theta is cos theta that is real part of that particular is uh, and that is given by uh, vm divided by xs cos by 2 and minus e divided by xs cos delta plus by 2 cos delta plus by 2. so now it is given by uh, e divided by xs sin delta e divided by xs sin delta because uh, whatever the cos by 2 is there it is again the zero so finally we can get uh, e divided by xs cos delta plus pi by 2 and it is sin delta so now uh, we have is cos theta as e divided by xs sin delta so now we can put that particular value in the above equation that is uh, whatever the pm we have got that is three uh, vs is cos theta and then three v is cos theta i can put as uh, again it is e divided by xs sin delta e divided by xs sin delta so in this case uh, whatever the omega m is there it is equal to omega m s so whatever the motor speed is there it is equal to the synchronous speed uh, because here the slip s is equal to zero slip s is equal to zero and hence uh, what is the torque torque equation can be written as uh, whatever the mechanical power divided by the motor speed motor speed so now the mechanical power pm it is uh, 3 ve divided by x s and delta 3 ve sin delta to x s and this is omega ms ms and here the delta is the torque delta is the torque so this is the equation for torque torque of an cylindrical synchronous motor cylindrical synchronous motor so now uh, we need to uh, Again, it is uh, for the constant frequency, constant frequency, whatever the frequency uh, of the supply is there, it is constant and B is also constant, voltage is also constant and the excitation is also constant, remains constant and the speed of that particular motor is also constant, speed of the motor is also constant. So, uh, we can uh, vary this particular torque just by varying the torque angle delta just by varying the torque angle delta so uh, we can draw that particular uh, curve here so this is uh, along the y-axis torque and along the x-axis it is delta so now uh, we can just vary that particular torque just by varying the delta so now uh, at delta is equal to 5 by 2 at delta is equal to 5 by 2 whatever the torque is there it is t max it is t max and it is again uh, if you uh, go in the reverse direction if uh, delta is equal to again the minus pi by 2 and whatever the torque is there it is negative it is minus t max and this is in the during the braking this is during the motoring condition as it is in the first quarter as it is in the first quarter so this is uh, about the equivalent circuit and the particular phase diagram and uh, now we will see the speed torque characteristics speed torque characteristics so this is till the torque equation t max and this is the speed torque characteristics with a fixed frequency supply with a fixed frequency supply so in this case uh, as the motor is uh, running with a synchronous speed running with the synchronous speed and it is a constant speed constant speed so whatever the torque of the motor is there it is again the depending on the delta depending on the delta and here uh, let us say this torque is again it is uh, for this particular omega ms it is constant the torque is remains again here it is let us say a constant speed so we can just see uh, at this particular point we can say pull out torque 
So delta is pi by two. Delta is equal to pi by two, and it is t max. It is t max. Again, uh, this is for the motoring action and for the braking action. Whatever the uh, delta is there, it is again pi by two minus that, that time whatever the torque is there, it is minus t max. So again, uh, whatever the torque of the motor is there. So it is again uh, depending on the particular uh, power factor, and depending power factor. So uh, when the uh, and uh, at that point uh, we need to draw different phase diagrams. We need to draw the different phase diagrams. So here, when the field excitation is small and the machine is operates with the lagging power factor, and the field excitation is small. The machine will be operating with the lagging power factor, and again the power factor can be made unity or leading by increasing the field excitation. Increasing the field excitation. So just by changing the field excitation, so we can uh, operate that particular motor with the different power factors. With the different power factors. So here these are the three cases for the lagging power factor. Uh, here it is is and it is b reference voltage supply voltage uh, is it is lagging b by pi b by pi and this is excess is the drop is drop now i can draw the uh, e phase by taking b and is excess so this is the e excitation so in this case uh, e is Small excitation is small, and the motor is operating on lagging power factor. In the second case, uh, I S is in phase with the V. There is whatever the pi is there, it is zero. Angle between I S and V, power factor angle will be zero, and hence uh, whatever the I S excess is there, drop. So it will be taken along this, and if I so again, uh, join this particular phasor, it will be E and it is for the unity power factor. Unity power factor and it is E is again the moderate. moderate. And for the, again, uh, if I keep that excitation is uh, large, then uh, again V and this is particular IS. IS is again, it is leading leading and this is is axis is the drop and if i take this particular phaser e so now it is uh, e will be high e will be high and it is leading power factor operation so this is about uh, operation of the particular motor with the different excitation levels excitation levels so these are the examples uh, based on that particular parameters what we have discussed uh, motor power then again the speed synchron speed and the particular torque equation of the motor so these all parameters will be come into picture while solving the examples so next uh, we will see the another uh, important Topic is silent pole wound field motor. Silent pole wound field motor. So again, this is uh, another type of that particular synchronous motor. So in this uh, silent pole wound field motor, as we have discussed, so whatever the air gap is there, it is non-uniform and it is uh, employed for low speed applications. Low speed applications. So we'll see uh, again. This is the phasor diagram of silent pole motor. Uh, in the same way, uh, we need to again um, derive an expression for that particular torque for the silent pole synchronous motor machine. So in the silent pole synchronous motor, uh, what we need to understand is. Here, uh, mainly uh, there are particularly 
uh, whatever the excess is there it is uh, dividing uh, into two parts so one is along the direct axis and the second is along the quadrature axis along the quadrature axis so in order to see that particular we will uh, just i will show you this particular image so this is uh, again for the silent pole rotor silent pole rotor so there are uh, mainly uh, two axis one is uh, along the again this is for this direct axis direct axis and this is for the quadrature axis this is for the quadrature axis so here uh, we need to uh, take the voltage equation as uh, e that is excitation e plus uh, the drop that is uh, along the two axis along the two axis uh, one is along the direct axis and another one is along the quadrature axis so e plus j i s d e x s d plus j i s q x s q x s q so here uh, whatever the e is there it is the e excitation plus uh, j i s d x s d this is the i s d uh, here you can say this is e and this is j i s d x s d and this is the j i s q x s q so whatever the drop uh, is there that is j i s d x s d it should be perpendicular to the that uh, i s d i s d that is uh, current along the uh, direct axis synchronous current so this is and then j i s q x s q it is again uh, taken perpendicular uh, to the again i s q again it is taken perpendicular to the i s q so in this case uh, here you can see this particular uh, if i draw this particular phasor diagram for the silent pole rotor so you can draw the phasor diagram so here there are two axes i told you one is d axis d axis direct axis and the second is quadrature axis quadrature so this particular field current so this is the field current of the motor and this is again the is current so it is again divided into two components so this is is divided into two component so uh, one is this particular is q and the second is it is is second is isd so in the previous we have seen there is only one uh, is that is because the wound field synchronous motor or the cylindrical rotor uh, sorry uh, yes in the cylindrical rotor there is one is component we have seen whereas in the silent pole it is divided into two now we will see the derivation so here this is the v and then p in is equal to 3v is cos theta and that is equal to p out because we are neglecting the stator losses so now again we need to get the is cos theta term here so is cos theta so can be written as it is isq cos delta isq cos delta plus isd cos 90 plus delta cos 90 plus delta so in this case whatever the is cos theta is there so we need to get this particular equation is cos theta it is given by uh, isq isq cos delta here isq cos delta plus then isd isd cos 90 plus delta 90 plus delta because 
so this is the 90 degree from this axis to the this axis it is 90 degree plus this is delta plus this is delta so now i sq cos delta so i sq cos of 90 plus delta will be i sd sin delta i sd sin delta this is equation number one this is equation number one now uh, just we need to get ISD XSD term. So ISD XSD term will be given by V cos delta minus E. V cos delta minus E. So here, so we can take this particular V cos delta and E. So we can get the term ISD XSD. ISD XSD. So now from this you can get IST as B cos delta minus E divided by XST and this is your equation number two. Now ISQ XSQ is equal to V sin delta from the phasor diagram. Again ISQ is equal to V sin delta by XSQ and this is equation number three. So here substituting the equation number uh, values for IST and ISQ from two and three into equation number one. Just by substituting these two in equation number one, so we can get I S cos theta is equal to V by X S to sin delta cos delta minus V cos delta minus E divided by X S T sin delta. And that is equal to V by X S to sin 2 delta divided by 2. And uh, minus V divided by X S T. Again, this is uh, cos delta cos delta divided by 2. And minus E divided by X S T sin delta e divided by xst sin delta so this equation uh, we can get here this is the equation we can get so here again uh, it has two components it has two components one component it is synchronous tall it is proportional to sin delta it is synchronous tall it is proportional to sin delta and the second component that is reluctance torque, reluctance torque is proportional to sine to delta. Sine to delta. So uh, this is the torque equation for silent pole motor. Silent pole motor. So we will see next the another type of motor that is permanent magnet motor. Permanent magnet motor. So in the again permanent magnet motor. Uh, the field excitation is obtained by mounting permanent magnets on the rotor. Just by mounting permanent magnet on the rotor, we can have that field excitation. And this eliminates DC source. This eliminates DC source and losses associated with the field winding. And frequent maintenance associated with the slip rings and brushes in a worn field motor. So, but when then the power factor cannot be controlled because the field excitation cannot be changed. These motors are usually designed to operate at unity power factor at full load, while projecting type machine has an uniform area, and the inset and interior type have essentially silent pole constructions. Therefore, power and torque expressions. Uh, of this particular equation 7.2 and 7.4 are applicable to the uh, projecting type surface magnet machines and those of uh, 7.9 and 7.10 are applicable to the interior and the inset type of surface magnet machines. So this is about the uh, different type of motors and this is the synchronous reluctance motor synchronous reluctance motor this is the torque equation for synchronous reluctance motor so now we will see the other important topic that is operation from fixed frequency supply fixed frequency supply so this i will uh, take away in the next session thank you